the support for the club over the last 12 months has just been second to none. So I guess this is a bit of a cool thing for us to do as well, to give back at the very least. So uh, we can't do this face to face, but that's fine because virtually we can still get up close and personal um, and from the comfort of your living room as well. So thank you very much for all of your questions that you have sent in. Uh, we'll try and get through as many as possible. And uh, also if you've got any questions as well to ask throughout this evening, I know we're only going to be on here for uh, an hour, but if you've got any other questions via messenger throughout the hour, just jot them in there. And as I mentioned, when you all came uh, in, just a little bit of housekeeping as well. Just keep your microphones um, off and on mute uh, unless you are invited to tools. Um, it does become very noisy and quite hard to follow. So our special guest this evening, we've got the big guns into stuff, man who is transforming the dragons on the field, director of rugby, Dean Ryan, and I'm sure he wouldn't be able to do it all without the help of his forwards coach, Methin Davis, and backs coach, Gordon Ross. So we've got a Welshman, a Scotsman, and an Englishman, aren't we lucky? Uh, so ladies and gents, give a big Zoom round of applause for Dean Ryan, Methin Davis, and Gordon Ross. <laughs> Welcome guys, thank you very much for joining us. Uh, Dean, let me start with you first of all. I know before we go into anything, you have got some contract news exclusively for us lot on Zoom tonight. Yeah, evening everybody and, and welcome obviously to uh, the first night Q&A with, with the Dragons. And as Polly said, we're, we're hopeful of doing this every month and, and also ho hopeful of adding value by using this as a little bit of a forum to announce some news and um, keep you informed of, of what's going on. Um, I think, you know, certainly with recent days, there's been the announcement of Will Rowlands, but also at times during press conferences, I've been asked about others. And I think um, it's been a difficult time in terms of knowing what the future looks like and um, trying to plan a squad, as, uh, which is clearly looking further down the line. Um, and then, as always, um, I think one of the challenges for the Dragons has been to make sure that it hangs on to the talent that it's got um, and to ensure not only that it hangs on, but that talent feels that the Dragon is, Dragons is the best place for it to get better. Um, you know, we've got guys involved in Six Nation squads. We've got guys who we think should be involved in Six Nation squads. And we've certainly got some youngsters who we'll see in Six Nation squads of the future. So uh, with that challenge in mind, I think over the coming weeks, um, we'll, we'll start to talk about the successes we've had in that area. And I'd like to start this evening in announcing that Ollie Griff has agreed to extend with the Dragons. Um, and I all know, you know Ollie Griff really well um, and how frustrating we have that he's not got his services with us at the moment, but is, I think for the time that we saw him this season, I think we're all... Um, understand how important he is to what we feel the Dragons is of the future because his ability to uh, impact a game is probably second to none from a position of seven and eight and um, we all we all are wishing him well in terms of his return to uh, the pitch as, as soon as possible. So in true spirit of first night of the, with the Dragons, Bolly, sorry to steal it, but we've got Ollie on and uh, for those of you who observe it enough, um, Ollie, welcome on, and uh, just a few words about thoughts around Dragons and future and your signing. Obviously, very happy to, to have re-signed for the foreseeable. Um, been at the Dragons now since under-16s, under-17s, so it's a place very close to my heart. Um, lots of ups and downs at the club, but uh, seeing the last year or two, we've sort of kicked on a little bit. Uh, playing Champions Cup rugby, that's where I want to be as an individual. I think that's where the team wants to be, so... It was a no-brainer, really. Um, I've grown up playing with all my friends and see the ambition of the club these last couple of years. So it was an easy, easy decision to stay. Thank Dean, thank you so much for that amazing announcement. And Ollie, thank you so much for joining us as well. I, I know, obviously, it sounds like the Dragons is obviously a very special place for you. Um, you must be excited for the future <laughs> at the region, right? Especially now uh, with Dean's vision, everyone's talking about how exciting, uh, you know, the next couple of seasons are going to be. Yeah, massively. I, I mean, um, there's been a lot of ups and downs um, since I started the Dragons, but I definitely see the future being a positive one. So I'm happy to, to play a part in that. 
And finally, before we move on to, to ask questions to, uh, to your coaches, just a quick message to the fans all here tonight. I know we had a, a lot of uh, yeah. excited, happy faces when they realised you were re-signing. Um, looking forward to welcoming them back. Yeah, I can't wait. I mean, playing at Rodney Parade on Friday night and you're in the Hazel stand bouncing is, is a massive reason why I, why I stayed as well. I mean, the, the fans at Rodney Parade have played there since uh, my Newport RFC days. Uh, great place to play and just want, want to say thanks to the fans for their support. Even though you're not with us, we're still reading the messages, seeing the videos and stuff online. I know it does mean a lot to, uh, to the players knowing you're still behind us. So thank you and hopefully see you soon. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Ollie, for that. And uh, thank you very much, Dean, for the exclusive contract news. Very exciting. Um, but look, um, as we mentioned earlier, Dean, back to you. This is about being as transparent as we possibly can. Now, Dean, there are Twitter mutterings about you being on the wanted list at a certain club, the Harlequins. <laughs> and uh, in the words of Dave Buttress, it's a well-deserved compliment. Always good to see our people wanted. I hope and expect that. But can you give us your thoughts as well on that this evening? Yeah, I think um, <laughs> I obviously got a few messages yesterday with uh, the rugby paper flying a kite with with my name and um <laughs> i think two things i i only ever work somewhere that i really enjoy myself now and uh i've never enjoyed more than the last 18 months um for some time both in a coaching career but also i suppose with what we're trying to do is I've probably changed my focus a little bit more to be more in a support role of of creating the right environment for this group so I think that's really important because we're in an industry that speculation sits around us all the time. But uh, I really do enjoy where I am. I have no interest. If anybody knows about my WASP career and thought of me being linked with a Quinn's job, it's pretty low down the list of any things I, I would consider. But I think more importantly than that, because you would get end up denying speculation, I think it's easy to just to say how much I enjoy where I am and I've, I've no interest or desire to be looking elsewhere. Well, I'm glad you've cleared that up for us. Thank you very much. We only knew it was just a rumour and, and that's great. But um, let, tell us about the season so far for you. It's been a season like no other. Can you sum it up for us thus far? Yeah, it's difficult to sort of, when did it start and when yeah. did the last one end? Is, is, uh, yeah, I think you know, we really are going right back to March when you know, my first year with the Dragons, I thought... You know, as I always said, we're a young group and gaining experiences is crucial to the development and sort of middle of sort of what Six Nations time last year, we were sort of pretty comfortable with where we were and where we wanted to kick on and, and suddenly everything started to change and obviously lockdown took away an ending to a season, which would have been an experience for us, but then everything from there has been trying to plan something almost on the hoof. Are we going to come back and play the season? Are we going to play um, the, you know, the full ending? Are we going to be in just derbies? How quickly does that move into this season? And, you know, they have blended um, into one. I was incredibly proud of how, I suppose the whole region and, and everyone involved in the team managed the lockdown because, you know, we, we, well, probably one, you know, straight to Zoom, straight to working out. How do we have a beer on Zoom? How do we stay in contact? How do we stay in support of each other? Um, and we did some pretty mad and crazy and quite inventive stuff over that period. But um, and then coming back, it's all been a little bit like that, trying to get a season. I suppose the biggest challenge we've had is the, I suppose, the evolving nature of what COVID impact can have on us as we start testing our families and everything else and what we've had one quarantine period uh, incredibly disappointed that Europe's experience has changed for us I thought coming off the back of Benetton Glasgow was probably the most momentum we've had and I've really felt going into the WASP game that this was a credible game of us winning in our first Champions Cup and suddenly what eight players left us on Saturday morning and suddenly it changed very much and it's been difficult since then because there's been you know sporadic sort of absences as people isolate and everything else so 
Um, this year summed up probably the most difficult I've had in planning, probably the most enlightening I've had in Zoom with 50 guys every week. Um, and hopefully coming out into something that just gets a little bit of momentum um, and something that we can continue to improve um, so that we can continue to move towards the future. And, you know, people like Ollie, you know, gaining, um, I suppose, their trust that the future is the right place is convincing people like Will Rowlands that international rugby, the Dragons is the platform to do that, is all part of that journey across where I hopefully I've been transparent that needed stability it needed to take the highs and lows out it needed to create the right environment for people to get better and now I think we're seeing that we're seeing people get better and also we're seeing people be more convinced that it's a credible place to come and join absolutely and I think it you know it's a credit to your to your vision uh, for the future at the region, why people are re-signing and why the new signings are, are, are coming to drag it, to the Dragons. But, um, you know, talking of the future, let's just look forward to uh, to Friday night. Um, excited for the big game? I'm just I'm really excited about playing again. <laughs> is You will not realise how dull it is to create weeks <laughs> just to be able to get through the week. And, <laughs> you know, pre-season is one thing and it's, it's definitely warmer. Um, and, you know, but once you get into this time of the season, like, we train really hard, mainly because we're all trying to stay out of homeschooling and, and the last thing we want to do is, is to have time off. But we train really hard across this period and there's a point when that training balance and desire to play just starts to tip and, and we're definitely on that point. And we need to play. Um, this group has always needed to play to learn. And I'm hoping that the next six or seven weeks they can get some momentum and start to um, get the results that they deserve. Absolutely. Meth, let's, uh, let's head on to you for a second. Um, let's talk about how your first season has gone at uh, the Dragons. Yeah, you've been on. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Obviously, um, uh, great to be back in Wales. Um, it's been a long time for me uh, to be involved uh, with any sort of rugby in Wales. been away for a long period of time. Uh, not knowing what the situation is, uh, obviously knowing, knowing the results, but also seeing the change uh, at the Dragons, um, you know, uh, to see the development, things getting better, the uh, the desire of the region uh, for a change to get better uh, just excited me. And also to see um, great talent, a lot of young players, have a lot of potential and uh, to have, uh, unfortunately, a lot of them have played and unfortunately a lot of them haven't played due to the COVID situation. Uh, so basically there's a lot that uh, I'm sure will come through again uh, when they uh, yeah. give them more game time. So it's a funny situation for everybody, uh, but in terms of the starting point, excited and um, looking forward uh, for the remaining games of the season. And how impressed have you been with the talent at the region? Yeah, well, obviously, this is the unknown walking in with a clean sheet and uh, knowing some names from, from the past, really, but also uh, it's the hidden gems is what I'm excited about and the, uh, the rough diamond or, or so, really, is to see how young they are, uh, even though they look dramatically older, they've had probably a, a rough paper round, uh, but realising the potential and, the, and uh, what, what they can fulfil in rugby, uh, that's what excites me, really, and there's so many of them that have I've got a huge work ethic uh, and just want to learn. You know, that's the biggest thing. They just want to learn. And, uh, you know, if everybody, can, you know, can take everything on the board from, from the coaches we have and uh, get in the, in, the, in the same direction, then all of a sudden we'll, we'll, we will get changed. Absolutely. And, you know, talking in names of the past there, you were saying, is it um, enjoyable being back working with Dean again? Yeah, of course. You know, this is uh, probably one of the paths. <laughs> You know, it's the, it's the devil you know, the devil you don't, don't. but uh, also I know I will learn as well. So that's the important thing. Um, when I was in Worcester for a long period and uh, basically I stopped learning and, um, you know, before you know it, bang, you know, obviously things challenged and uh, questions and you know, this is exactly what personally that I would want and I know it, it will benefit me. So I'm, you know, grateful for that. Absolutely. Um, Bax coach Gordon, let's head to you. Uh, welcome to Zoom tonight. Hope you're, hope you're doing well and, and keeping well. Yeah, thank you very much. Yeah, it's, um, like Dean said, um, we're trying to get homeschooling as much as possible. So any excuse to go to work is great at the moment. But uh, no, thanks for the welcome. Um, 
And I think that was one thing that stood out for me since I've been at Dragons is not just the staff, but the players have been unbelievably welcoming. And it was made my first two or three weeks at the club, you know, quite quite easy to fit in. And uh, a huge part of that was due to the welcome I got from the players and also the staff around the place. And that's huge credit to Dean and the environment he's created over the last year, 18 months at Dragons. Oh, fantastic. And and what's the experience like sort of stepping up to a, a senior coaching role, if you like? Yeah, that's something I've been desperate to do for a few years and um, I'm very grateful to Dean and the, and the staff for giving me the chance and, and stepping up has been good. Um, it was great working with senior players again of, of the standard that we have at Dragons and as Methan said, the, the talent's there, the, the work ethic's there and I really believe that, that we're going in, in, in the right direction to move forward and I think it was said earlier, I think Barley, it's just a huge shame that there's not fans there on a weekly basis to see it uh, at my Rodney Parades. And there's been two or three times I've been at Rodney Parade in the past playing there and also coaching there. And it's uh, a hostile environment. And uh, it's one I'm really desperate to try and see on a Friday night with a full house um, and seeing the, the support get behind the boys. It'd be good to uh, to finally have that back on it, that atmosphere. But how is it uh, being the man in charge for the uh, Munster game after COVID, uh, COVID struck in the camp? <laughs> yeah, that was uh, a little bit strange. I remember coming in on I think it was a Tuesday or Wednesday morning, and uh, the the coaches' faces were a bit sketchier than usual, and all of a sudden they disappeared. <laughs> and I was like, "What we're going to do, Barry? I don't know <laughs> who else has left." So, but no, um, we had really good communication through the kind of Zoom, and um, most mornings and most nights we had Zoom meetings, so there, there wasn't too much to say. And as I said earlier, the staff that were that weren't away with COVID were so supportive that we, we as the guys that we didn't have to do too much and again I hate to say this again but that's credit to what Dean's created previously around Dragons and the platform he's given for coaches to go and perform in their individual subject but also collectively as a group. And you know I was asking uh, um, Meth about you know how how impressed he is with the talent at the region how impressed are you by the talent in the backs just at your disposal I suppose at the moment? <laughs> Yeah, it's good. As you know, it's, it's been strange times. There's some weeks we had loads of guys fit, and then I think, as Dean said, you pick up injuries, a bit of COVID, and guys are missing out. But that creates opportunity, and I think that's been great for some guys, some of the youngsters, but also some guys that had much of an opportunity have come in and they stepped in really, really well over the festive period. And it's just so unfortunate there's not games that all guys can play in because there's probably five or six guys that certainly over the last month have been really, really impressive in training. They're desperate for games of rugby, but they're just not there uh, at the moment. All right, guys. Um, what I want you to do now is, uh, before we get to these supporters' questions to you, uh, you're all brilliant players in, in your own right. You've all played internationally for your countries. Let's just chat quickly about the uh, the upcoming Six Nations this year. Um, from each of you, I want you to pick a winning nation that will lift the trophy this year and why. Let's start with uh, let's start with Dean. Well, we're just going to like play the uh, Meth's going to win this, isn't it? Because it's going to go back Wales. Um, but for me, England and France are the standouts. Um, I think it's going to be interesting. Is as a if you're coaching in the Six Nations this year, would be I think those who are the most creative about how to spend seven or eight weeks together. Um, that might not sound like a, um, a huge amount of time, but a Six Nations campaign can be incredibly intense and. For the bubbles that, <coughs> excuse me, people are going to have to work in, um, I think it's going to be a big challenge to those who are managing. Sometimes rugby is not just about rugby; it's about the environments you can create around, and quite often that involves being able to get away, social, everything, and that's going to be a huge challenge. But in terms of strength, um, England, France, and I just. I still feel England is the most consistent side, um, the most difficult to beat, albeit I'm probably at a stage where I prefer to watch France. Um, but as if, I'm, if I'm having to put my money on somewhere, it would definitely be on consistent England. OK. All right. We got yours, Dean. Uh, go on, Meth. What's yours? <laughs> Difficult one. Um, obviously, my heart says Wales without any yeah. doubt and uh, from the first game to the very last. But... Uh, in terms of a realistic one, and obviously in where everybody's at the moment, I do think Wales are in a big transition of obviously different coaches, new new squad uh, stability, and obviously there's a lot of things that need to be solved. And 
But on the flip side, uh, see massive improvement with Scotland and also with uh, with France. Uh, probably France are probably ahead of the game. Uh, and if I do were back anybody, it'd be probably France to leave uh, this season. Okay, thanks, Matt. And uh, Gordon, go on professionally. Who would you say? <laughs> I've got to agree with Dean and, and Methan. I think France will probably, I think the French are probably the best team in it. The, 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 the new coach has gotten, they're a lot better organised than they have been in the past. Um, and I've got a few X Factor players in there. Obviously, from a personal point of view, now obviously we want to see Scotland do extremely well. But away in France and away in England is, is tough, it's tough game some. But Finn Russell coming back will obviously add some creativity. Then if he can stay fit for the five games and hopefully we get at least two or three home wins and maybe sneaking away win somewhere as well. Oh, I think it's going to be a good tournament, a different one, uh, that's for sure. But um, yeah, it'd be nice to see what sort of, uh, um, I suppose, what nick all the, uh, the nations are in. But thank you very much for answering my questions. Remember, you can still ask uh, the people on Zoom tonight um, any questions that you want. Just head over to the message area just via the messenger there and, and stick whatever you want in there. And if we've got time later on, we can ask them. But we now turn to uh, the man who heads up the Dragons official supporters club. He's called Daniel Hallett. He's got a few words to say, and then he's gonna fire off with the questions for Dean, Meth and Gordon. So Daniel, if you can unmute yourself and uh, say your piece. Okay, hopefully, can you all hear me? Because my, my technology is... Uh... We can hear you. you. We is, did. That's good. Uh, first off, thanks, Polly, for hosting tonight. Um, I hope your on inboard uh, computer stand <laughs> is, is holding up. It's good. It's good. Uh, the internet's a bit dodgy, that's all. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, thanks very much. Uh, firstly, uh, or, well, secondly, thank you to Dean Gordon and Mevin to, to, to make themselves available for tonight, and obviously for Dean for. Um, announcing the fantastic news that Ollie's staying or signed a new contract. I uh, just hopefully now we can uh, have an injury free run and we can all see uh, how good a player he actually is. Um, I'd also like to thank all the, the participants of uh, tonight. It is 74, I believe, online at the moment, which is quite incredible. And um, I think that's due to the fact that we've actually got the main coaches here. Um, so I'll get down to the questions because I know we're slightly time limited. Um, the first one is to Dean. Uh, Aaron Wainwright, how much influence has Wayne Tovac had on moving into eight and or does Wayne have much of an influence at all? I think I can probably guess the answer but I uh, just want to hear it from yourself. I know obviously we've got uh, enough back row players that can probably play across the back three positions on any given day. Um, so, is there much of an influence? Um, I think, to be fair, is, is Wayne's been quite clear in terms of the resources that are available to him that he'd like to explore Aaron playing today. Um, he certainly uh, looked at that through his own selections. Um, in terms of ourselves, we've always been pretty flexible. One is I'd always support something that... Um, would be a, a foundation for someone to go on internationally, but I'd also make sure that's got Dragon's interests um, in line as well. And, you know, I think what we've seen is we've a number of back rowers that are available at different times and them having a skill set that can play um, six, eight and seven has, has been beneficial for us. So it, it's actually worked for, I think, for both groups. I think certainly Aaron's had the opportunity to say, look, if you want to play me at number eight internationally, this is what, what I can do. I think it frees him up a bit. I think it gets him involved earlier in the game. Um, I still think there's a lot for him. It's quite, you know, people think six, eight, it's quite a different position in where it launches you into the middle of the field more. Whereas, you know, one of some of Aaron's frustration is in the system that he's been playing, it's been holding him wide and can have large lapses of inactivity in a game. And he's somebody that likes to stay involved continuously. Um, obviously, Ollie Griff has played a bit there, done a great job for us. You know, we, we've obviously got Ross and, and Harrison Keddy, who's playing out, out of you know, his skin in terms of form at the moment. So for me, it's been... Um, a group of people being flexible enough to play together. And also if that's um, where Wayne sees him, making sure that he gets 
you know en enough there to say if you want to pick me this is this is where i am and i think you've got to get that balance right Excellent. Um, also showing wayne what he can do with that position as well well, as I said, I think it's a it's a very different position, and I think is if you could imagine a set piece, is it throws you out very close to the ball, is your activity is very much quicker in. I think Aaron, Aaron can do both. Is you know his ability to stay in wide channels is is outstanding, but I suppose large phases of inactivity, especially international rugby. Um, you know, international rugby is different from club rugby. It's not as multi-phase. I know Wayne's trying to influence that a little bit, but is there's a lot more kick in and Aaron can spend a lot of time without the ball in his hands. And I think we forget sometimes Aaron's what, 23, late to the game at sort of 18, 19. And, and so the more activity he gets, the better he gets, the more he learns. So being flexible about where he plays is, uh, is certainly a benefit for him as well as us. Okay, thank you. Um, this is for the three of you, basically. Um, with the difficulty with COVID and having bubbles of players, is there something that you can take from the coaching you're having to do now into when eventually, whenever it may be, that we we um, go back into freedom? I'm definitely letting one of the other two answer that. Bev, this is for you. <laughs> yeah. um, it's a good question, really. I think one thing it, uh, it, we realise in terms of uh, this technology this evening, in terms of Zoom, really, uh, that you're able to do stuff. You know, we, we all travel in different areas and uh, we come to work but in terms of having uh, discussions, meeting or, or a group of conversations with a group of players. Then all of a sudden you can grab them as you are in, in Ostrumbanach. Uh, in, in the tent or any presentation you need to do, then you've learned a lot in terms of finding other ways uh, to present or to have a discussion or debates. Uh, so it, it doesn't stop really. So the world will continue and uh, it has, and then basically we'll, we'll get through this. Uh, that's the good thing with it all. It's just a matter of taking on, you know, for the uh, uh, future really, uh, that these options are still going to be available for us. I think, I think for me, Daniel, is, um, it emphasises um, the need to keep building relationships, uh, and never more so than across the summer. I mean, we're 60, 70 people work for the Dragons in the performance area, and um, we all had to learn new skills to stay in touch. Is It wasn't enough just to take three or four weeks off and then come in, and it, you know, so... It, it was, how do we do this better than everybody else? How do we come out stronger than when we went in? How do we challenge ourselves to learn new things? It wasn't, oh, this isn't how I've done it in the past. And, you know, building relationships, believe me, the first day I had to speak to 70 people over Zoom, half of them were semi-naked and walked out as ever, as and when when talking to the team. And it, and it it's difficult. And it sounds at the moment like it sounds really easy, but we've been doing it now for nearly a year. And, um, keeping relationships because relationships are central to everything we're trying to do is we're trying to build, you know, a stable, trusting environment. And then in March, we all got thrown home. Um, and how we maintain that trust, how we keep people engaged, how we keep people believing that, how do we get better? How do we challenge ourselves to do that has all been part of the skills and, and it will change when it comes back. But it's it's forced us to recognise how hard we have to work at that to uh, to keep ahead. Thank you, uh, Gordon. Just on a, a quick one, which is easier, home to win or coaching thirty odd angry young men? Pardon, what was that? Sorry. What's what's more difficult, homeschooling or uh, co uh, coaching thirty young angry young men? Homeschooling, a hundred percent. A hundred percent. You can't get out of it, but no, uh, sometimes it's quite similar, to be honest, uh, trying to get a point across with both my six-year-old and uh, th uh, 30 lads, but no, no, I mean, I've loved every minute going into Dragons and I enjoy the journey and every day, um, and there's times you go home quite fatigued knowing that you've got homeschooling to do, but uh, no, it's definitely worth it. Um, I, I think that's, that's all from me, so I'll hand it back to Polly to kind of 
carry on. Thank, thank you. Very thank much. you very much. Thank you very much, Daniel, and thank you for your continued support and uh, and helping us uh, get this off the ground tonight. Uh, as I say, you can still get your questions in the messenger section of this Zoom call. So if there are any extras, or maybe you're you're listening to the guys now talking, if it sparks anything off, then get your questions in. But uh, I'll kick off with the questions that we've had in previously over the last couple of days, and uh, the first one is to Dean from Keith Bird. He says, given the disruption to the season due to COVID and injuries, where do you feel the squad is in its progression? That's a good question. I think it's quite difficult to, to answer. And, and I don't think it's, I don't think it's like a staircase where you get to a point and you don't come back. I, I think it's moving all the time. Um, I definitely, um, I see improvement when the group is together playing regularly. You know, you've got to remember, you know, it's been hugely disruptive not having our internationals and then having them back for four weeks and then they're not going because we, we changed the dynamics. Um, so I felt, you know, uh, probably the highest we were up on that development was that momentum out of quarantine when we went Bennett on Glasgow in performance terms. Um, you know, certainly the Glasgow game could have easily gone the other way and it, it wouldn't have felt as good. But in performance terms, it was it was the first time we've had a lot of control in a game and we've got the outcome defined by the way we behave rather than how others behave. Um, and then that's sort of gone away from us a bit as we certainly lost momentum. We lost some of our key decision makers around um, key positions. So I'm, I'm hoping is definitely, uh, are we a better side than last year? Yes. Um, does that, you know, we win, what, two of the Derby games by one point in the last minute or whatever, and we lose the three this year and everyone thinks it's a massive backward step. That's my job is to flatten those out a bit, not make the lows as low and not make the highs feel like we're, we're, we've got it all done. Um, and in, it's in that environment where it's stable that people can get better. And we definitely um, are showing huge signs of improvement in some of our younger players. And I think we are now showing suit, you know, signs of improvement in the type of person that wants to continue to play and come to play at the Dragons. And if we look at that, if we, you know, I'd always challenge if we can make the the impact that Jamie Roberts. Uh, Jonah Holmes has next year, or Will Rowlands has, it builds. And at the same time, suddenly you find an Iron Owen is playing Pro 14 games every week and he's learnt off somebody who's got 90 odd caps. And that's that's what I see as us getting better. I don't I don't get framed in the short space of did we win last week, lose last week, because it, it certainly can distort things, but I'm also a realist and you know, we do. We can't. We can't switch that off. We do have to get results, and we do have to learn how to get results more consistently. Absolutely, and um, thank you very much to Keith Bird there. Um, and Ben has just written in the messenger. Um, did Dean just say nude Zoom calls are the future? I don't know whether anyone else missed that, but. Uh... Trust me, when you are well, 70 players in front of you, you never know what it is that switches on the camera at 10 o'clock in the morning. And uh, I certainly wouldn't want to play it back to you. Brilliant. OK, um, David Hancock, another question to Dean. There are uh, there are other questions to Gordon and, uh, and Meth, but um, uh, David Hancock says, can we have an update on our recruitment uh, retention of players for next season? I know we had obviously a, um, a little bit of news on, on the contract front earlier tonight, but uh, are we looking into strengthening the squad in any particular positions? As I said, I, I think the, th the first thing is we should understand that now our Welsh players are negotiated through central contracts with the union. Um, and that's a new process. Um, although the contract is held with us, the, the um, contract is, is actually part of a, a union negotiated um, deal. Um, that's new. Like anything that's new, it has its frustrations as, as well as its positives. And um, it's also been a difficult time to be sort of talking about, you know, the futures when we're not really knowing what the future looks like as, uh, you know, the finances have been challenged over COVID. What, what I would say as part of our recruitment, I'm very positive around our top 
internationals and our top players like Ollie in terms of their desire to remain a part of the Dragons. And over the next coming weeks and, and time, we will certainly announce those as, as we come. In terms of strengthening, um, I think sometimes we've got to realise is, you know, we've got to change the perception of, of the Dragons and getting, you know, key signings is... Uh, is, is more important than getting seven or eight people and going, it's going to be all right next year is it just doesn't happen that way is one is, you know, is we've got to get the people we think are right for the dragons and not just end up recruiting because I don't know, that might make it look better for the next six or eight months. Um, quite often that will do the people that are available. It's quite often, aren't as good as people we've got or are certainly filling a position that a youngster might grow into in, in the coming um, years. So it's really important that the people we bring in are really targeted about adding value to the Dragons. And, you know, you would have seen the impact that a Jamie's had this year. Um, and I'm pretty sure everyone would join me in understanding that Will Rowlands is the type of quality that we want. But we're not going to get six or seven of those. Just unrealistic to go the six or seven Will Rollins, you know, want to come to the Dragons with the finances to do that. What we've got to do is get this targeted, you know, hopefully two or three each year at the same time as the youngsters go a little bit better and our core internationals choose to stay. And uh, on that basis, I'm pretty confident um, over the coming weeks, you'll get good insight into uh, what the Dragons will look like next year. Fantastic. Thanks for, uh, thanks for that question, David. Uh, we head over to Philip Bindley, who's got a question to um, all three of you. What as coaches would you like to see done to the structure of the season to make your jobs less complex in terms of player welfare and just to generally uh, help you manage the squad better? Uh, Math, maybe you could take this away. That's a tough question. Obviously, we've had enough uh, disruptions as it is uh, this mm -hmm. season. I think it's been yeah. uh, telling and testing times for everybody, uh, not knowing what's next. And uh, to be fair to the Dragons and uh, the medical department, to be so careful in terms of testing on, the, on a weekly basis and, and virtually to make sure uh, that we can continue to train is massive. But... Uh, you know, things are in place, you know, we've proven and, and, and I do think we've led the way uh, over the other regions in terms of this. Um, you know, we've, we've shown examples and realistically it's just the support of each other and knowing to deal with something that nobody in the world um, knows how to deal with really. The good thing is with the games uh, are carrying on and we're able to do so. Uh, that's the massive one, but obviously in terms of um, coaches and everybody else, you just make sure we uh, fo follow protocol on a daily basis as we do. Um, and, and basically, we would like to know what the uh, forthcoming games are for, for the rest of the season. But you know what, then we have to take it to what's available at the moment. You know, we can't look too ahead uh, because I'm sure, uh, I'm not 100% I'm not sure of what the games are in the season. And we've got to continue from from a batch of uh, month at a time and go from there. Absolutely. I think, uh, sorry, Polly, I think no. the holy grail is, uh, I think, a season where we reduce the number of overlaps with international rugby. I think everybody would share that view. Um, I think everybody hoped COVID was maybe that opportunity that the power brokers in the room and across the world could see things aligned. Um, here we are in February, not quite knowing what the end of this season or what next year will look like. Uh, so it's, I, I definitely think there's an intent to reduce the, the amount of conflict between international rugby and domestic rugby and, and structures that do that. You know, I've already alluded to the difficulties of certainly a squad as young as our own is the disruption of people coming and going. I, I'd love to MEF to work with Leon Brown for, you know, six months straight. Um, I'd love to, you know, work with Elliot and, and others that allow us to, you know, sort of keep improving. I'm sure Wayne feels the same, but it's, it's the coming and going, which, you know, everybody's got a slightly different way of playing the game. Everyone's got a different way of communicating that. And it's, it's that disruption, um, which I think everybody would share, would, would like to see minimised. 
Absolutely, and good. And anything that you'd like to add on maybe the, the, the change in structure? No, I think one thing that, that Mev alluded to was just like the protocols around COVID, that the stuff the guys have done behind the scenes to make mm. our work on a daily basis a safe place is unbelievable. Every time we go somewhere, they send little videos and what we've got to do. It's almost like things you'd send your children to do if they're going to school, but that's the steps we've taken to make it as safe as possible. And I think, as Dean said, it'd be great to have a group together for, for a long period of time where you can get a nice run of games and, and just see how far this group can go. Absolutely. Uh, Philip, thank you very much for that question. Uh, Christian Hyde is next and he's got a question to each of you. I'll start with Dean. He says, what's it like to dangle Lawrence Delalio by his ankles over a balcony? <laughs> Seriously, oh, yeah. uh, have you ever... what's the name of the fella? <laughs> Christian Hyde. I thought nobody knew about that. <laughs> you can um, answer it if you want. He has got a serious question as well, but um, <laughs> is it? Uh, if everybody knew what myself and Lawrence got up to, I'd have to get off this. <laughs> um, don't read everything you or don't believe everything you read in books. Maybe that's it. Another Zoom call, another evening. But he yeah, says, that'll be another <laughs> evening, I think. Yeah. And um, have you ever experienced a side to have so many injuries? Um, I, I think uh, it, I think it's not necessarily the number of injuries. Is is We all got to recognise that we're one of the lowest resource groups. So, And resource isn't just about finance for squad. It can be about number of physios. It can be everything. And I, I know uh, we do a tremendous job um, ben Sterling in the medical department to keep everybody moving. We, you know, the lowest amount of players, not number of players, but we've got to remember players that are Pro 16 experience, Pro 14 experience, um, and we are constantly stressing a very small group. So when we get injuries, it looks like the end of the world to us. It's exaggerated by, um, you know, the range. You look at, you know, with COVID, it wasn't injuries, but the impact on um, us away in Bordeaux, where we had to play, you know, some guys' first games at senior level was Bordeaux away. Um, of all the places, you, you probably choose others. So that's just the nature of what it is. So we, we've... Got to get better um, at looking after, but as also we've got to get more people capable of playing at that space, and then we're not dependent on them being there every week. Absolutely. Um, Christian to Methin now, he says, uh, do you prefer scrums or lineouts, and why? <laughs> scrums. This is an easy one for me. I was born the scrum, okay, and uh, <laughs> it's definitely it is definitely fun. You know, that's what you got to remember. Okay, scrums are fun for me, so. Um, it's what I enjoy the most. Um, if you compare compared to lineups, the the variables are massive. Uh, the only frustration I got with scrums is probably uh, pe people making poor decisions, um, and I and I don't like when people mess around. Uh, but in terms of the contest and the part of the game, I think it's the what defines the game of rugby union. Absolutely. And uh, one final one from uh, Christian to Gordon, another technical one. Uh, do you feel there is too much kicking out of hand in the pro game? And why does it always seem to be down uh, the wingers and fullbacks throat? Wouldn't it be better off finding grass with a good chase? <laughs> yeah, there has at times been a lot of kicking. Um, unfortunately, now defences are so well organised. There's not much space on the pitch, so kicking is an opportunity to find space and move your team forward. And um, we do try and find space as much as we can, but there's not too much of it because the backfield's covered really, really well. It's something we are looking at and working hard at. The boys work really hard on it uh, during training uh, most weeks, and it's something we feel so we are getting better and getting our nose in that in games. But we all want to play in, in great conditions and play running rugby every day, but... You look at the Cardiff game, for example, on Boxing Day, it was a crosswind, rain, and going across, across the pitch. So it makes running rugby pretty difficult at times. But hopefully, fingers crossed, over the next few weeks, we get some good Scottish weather. It dries up and we can see some more ball in hand stuff for, from not just Dragons, but also the rest of the teams and, and the Six Nations games as well. Absolutely. Um, we'll stick with you, Gordon, actually. A, a message from, a question from Tim Carter. He says, um, and in fact, this is to all three of you, but uh, Gordon, if you could answer this first, what improvements in the team are you most pleased with? And what do you see as the key areas to focus on for the second half of the season? Um, good question. Uh, I think 
probably around, I think as Dean said earlier, around those Treviso and Glasgow games, we've played some really good running rugby, scored two or three really good tries, some guys that worked hard on the training pitch, but then conditions um, forced us to play a different brand of rugby over Christmas, and hopefully over the next two or three weeks, as we said, we can get back to playing a bit more ball and hand rugby if possible, and our core skills have been pretty good, but as I said earlier, I think some of our aerial stuff has been very good, and we've scored a couple of tries from that, and that's an area for us to focus on. But I think we're all looking forward to playing ball and hand rugby over the next few weeks. And over this last two or three weeks, we've not had a game. There's been a lot of rugby, as Dean said. And hopefully we'll get a reward of that in, in, in these up and coming games. And, uh, and Dean, what is your assessment on the uh, the improvements uh, this uh, this part of part one of the season? <laughs> I think uh, my, my necessary wouldn't be specific to, to something in the game but it, it would be their ability to take ownership of situations themselves um, you know one thing having a, a young group with you know quite a shallow number of experiences it's a balancing act between sharing your experiences and then making decisions themselves um, you know I've, I've alluded to everything's an experience that you can use at some stage in the future but you've got to take ownership and accountability of that and um, I'm, I'm enjoying that balance. Is there's definitely, you know, times um, that we have to take a stronger lead. But uh, uh, you know, as we grow across this next six or seven, there's plenty of times in games that that's not about who's coaching the team. It's about the the probably senior group making a collective group of decisions. And you know, you look at development of that, look at Harrison Keddie's development, captain over the last few years, I think he's a massive growth over the last um, couple of months. Rods comes back into the side. Sam's always been a key leader with us as well as Jamie and and watching them um, wrestle with the challenge of leadership, but also be able to take a group um, is definitely something that I, I enjoy watching them do. Absolutely. And uh, Mefin, anything to add on that? Perhaps any uh, key areas to focus on for the uh, second half of the season? Oh, the only thing we need to do is continue to learn and also develop. Uh, obviously, people would probably want results, so do we, but in the reality of it, we want to get everybody better. Um, obviously, the, the improvements are shown, okay, but the, the well, one thing we lack in a little bit at the moment is a bit of a continuity of games. Uh, there's a stop start and it's frustrating for all and, and something we we have to come to deal with, really. But there's a game on the weekend and that's a start for us and that's what uh, I think everybody's looking forward to. Absolutely. It's kind of adapting to the new normal or trying to embrace yeah. it as much as you can. Uh, sticking with you, Meth, um, a question from Connor Rice. He says, what's the lowest weight you want a hooker to be? Feeling a bit small for the position at 89 kilos. Uh, it depends. <laughs> what it, if, he's a fifth, if he's a 15-year-old guy, then obviously he'll grow. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know, the important thing is basically showing whatever his strength is and just uh, play at a level that suits him. Uh, but obviously, uh, being a lighter person, then he'd probably be more technical and relying on weight. So there's a lot of advantage to learning if he's young. Then basically spend a lot of time learning the tricks and the dark arts of uh, scrummaging uh, and on the technical side. But unfortunately, the bigger guys generally rely on weight and then they will not be able to deal with techni technical hookers. Uh, that's from that's the way I see it, but uh, just keep on learning and uh, getting better and you know, uh, training programs and everything in place to put weight on. So, uh, but you've got to be able to carry it as well. That's the main thing as well. <laughs> I hope that's helped a bit, Connor, and given you a bit of an insight from Meth there. Um, Sean Alabaster mm. has got a question for Gordon. He says, what's the greatest challenge when it comes to <laughs> unlocking defences? Is there an over-reliance on set moves, perhaps? I think you'll find now that most teams are quite clever and they change the defensive uh, pictures from week to week. Um, and an attack is, is playing to your strength. Is if you've got certain people that can do certain things, you want to get them on the ball if possible. And that's things we'll try and do. We'll try and do when planning ahead for teams is, is finding how we can get our better players involved in certain parts of the pitch. Thank you very much for that. Um, and who asked that, Sean? Thank you very much. Uh, let's head to. Uh, Lee, who has asked a question to Dean, and he says, delighted with the news that Will uh, Rowlands has signed up on a long-term contract. 
uh, congratulations, he puts, uh, I would like to know what conversations you had to convince Will that we are the best option. I think, um, to be honest, I've always just found transparency being the best option. Um, you know, I've been in recruitment um, as part of the role for some time now. And, you know, there's a lot of uh, SHIT spoken about when people talk about what it looks like and what false promises are and everything else. And I've always been pretty transparent of where we are, um, what my expectations of them are, but also how I think we can help them um, and help them get better. So there's a balancing trade-off. And I think you either find people who are really engaged by that and part of the challenge, or you find people who go, oh, no, it's not for me. I'm looking for something else. And yeah, fine, you don't waste your time with them anymore. And and Will was very much um, keen to hear about those things, keen to challenge himself. Um, you know, what is he, 28, 29 now? He's at that stage where, you know, it's probably been an environment where other people have, have led it. Um, and now he wants to be one of those key people. He obviously wants to ensure that he's, he continues to be... Um, at the forefront of Wales thinking. Um, so, yeah, uh, I think transparency is key, is not selling something that people don't believe. You know, the Dragons can be a tough place to come and play for, uh, you know, for an established player. It can put your reputation at risk. You know, you look at, I remember the first conversations with Sam Davis, you know, is what guarantees have you got? I've got none, Sam. You've got to come here. You've got to be make yourself first choice. And if you make yourself first choice, we'll get better. Um, and the same, you know, around Jamie and people like that is you've got to come here and make a real positive impact. You, you know, very transparent about what that challenge is. And quite often um, that's incredibly engaging. You know, it's for me as a, as a coach, it's incredibly engaging to see if I can take a group that have struggled for continuity and struggled for, for stability, see if I can um, create an environment that will put them on a trajectory where they'll be able to fulfill potential. And you know, will we, um, you know, in, in the foreseeable future, have a budget that ramps us up the league? No. But can I make an environment where people are getting better all the time is a really engaging challenge for me and uh, something I enjoy. And, and players do that the same. It'd be surprising how many are engaged by by that sort of transparency. Absolutely. Well, he's put pen to paper and he's an exciting sign in, that's for sure. But uh, Llewellyn Smith has asked, uh, what do you think uh, that Will will bring to the region? And is there anything that he may, uh, su I suppose, contribute from his time with uh, the Wasps? What, six foot eight, 125 kilos, <laughs> um, smart. I think um, that when you, when you capture Will, um, and his added value is what's premiership final where was against Exeter last year. Um, was had been hit by COVID and, and been cut down. Um, I thought him and Launchbury were the standout players in, in a final situation where they put up an incredible um, rear guard against you know the best side in Europe at that time. And they kept the whole side in contention for pretty much 75 minutes of that game through just sheer bloody mindedness that we're not going to let you anywhere near the line. Um, that That's an incredible asset when somebody is such a big man to be that capable an athlete and that driven is, is something I, I, I know will be a roaring success with us. So I don't think there'll be any, what did he add value to? I think you'll see it really clearly. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, we can't wait to uh, to see, and that's for sure. Um, a question for Meth and uh, Gordon from Nick Payne. He says, as a youth coach, what are the three things that you would want to see from that age group working on as they progress into senior rugby? Um, yeah, no, I have to go first. I think yeah. for me, a big thing is core skills. They've got to be able to do their core skills. I think everyone gets trapped in this vision that they've got to do something really, really fancy. But you'll see the majority of players at top level, that their core skills are excellent. Um, they've also got to have a hunger, where they're really, really determined to do well and succeed and, and probably have a bit of a competitive edge. Uh, and also they've got to enjoy it. I mean, if you're going to go into rugby and you want to make a career, but you've got to try and enjoy it. 
and that's something that within the dragons that the dean's created within the culture it's enjoyable you know they work really really hard day in day out that, that's a given but also they enjoy themselves kind of on and off the field through training stuff and and also things we do off the pitch as well and, and that's massively important um that you enjoy yourself as long as doing your hard, as well as doing your hard work as well yeah just, yeah just for myself obviously um i would totally agree with gordon there in terms of core skills you know a, a massive but also on the ad, added value really is to realize uh, what is important to a player within the position uh, obviously you a uh, player playing in wales uh, would probably be happy enough to run around and probably with full of desire which is important but also to to see the value uh, it, into your, in terms of your position you do play and to be very very good at that as well will probably carry on uh, in for future rugby as well absolutely and um, hope you uh, will take all that advice on board there nick some uh, some valuable uh, insight from uh, the coaches there. Richard Turner has got a question for you, Dean. He says, Dragons have made some exciting signings recently, uh, as we know, re-signings as well, and have a core of excellent young players. How can we retain these talents and prevent the exodus of key players uh, to the richer Welsh regions? Um, that's a really good question, because any, any other region can play 20, 30 grand over the top of, of what we do. Um, so we've got to we got to make sure our players believe it's the right place. Um, I, I think is that that's key. We spend so much time. If it becomes a monetary issue, one is probably not the right person for the Dragons, and two is we'll probably lose him. So we got to fight really hard to make it. You know, all the guys are talking about, you know, it's good fun. We have to work really hard to make it, you know, a, a really good space to come into work. You know, sometimes I think people think it is just about a line out on no metal will argue different but scrum but sometimes it is you know we, we have a range of staff that have been really creative where at the end of the year people go i want to stay at the dragons why you heard ollie say because all my friends are and i have a great time and i think i can get better um and that's that's what makes the difference for us if we end up in a recruitment market where it's about money then i'm afraid we come um some way back if we come to the recruitment market and it's about, is this a good place? And we're right up there. Um, and I think that's becoming more obvious. And we've got to keep doing that. We've got to keep working at it. We've got to keep selling it. I think word of mouth starts to spread. You know, guys go into international and they go, what's going on at the Dragons? Well, we're, we're great. You won't believe what we did last week. And and it's those things that um, over time will start to, to, to make a big difference. But as I said, it's a, it's a constant challenge because it is a young man's career, it is a young man's um, security, and they are constantly bombarded with other people offering um, more lucrative options. And uh, we, we've worked very hard for them to believe in what we're doing. Thank you, Dean. Thank you for an honest answer there. And thank you, Richard, as well, for your question. Um, a final question, I'm just going to sneak in before we before we end this, and I think it's a nice one to finish on. Uh, once again, for, for yourself, Dean, from Nathan Goslin, he says, what do you do as a director of rugby to ensure that all the players feel that they matter? Um, that's a really good question. Mm. And I think something we all should be challenged on all the time because it's, you know, we recently did an online poll just to see how people felt. Um, you know, if you're not picked in the 23, it can often feel that you're not part of that group is if you don't feel that how and, and more exaggerated this year um, is, you know, you can't go and play either in the premiership or for development games. So it's, it's a really big challenge. And if somebody that might not have now have played for a year, um, trained every day, given everything he's got and not got a Pro 14 start or not been part of that 23 is, is a real challenge. Um, so absolutely, that's at the centre of everything we do from um, allowing those young voices to share, being in team meetings, allowing and valuing their input in terms of analysis and just simple going around and making sure... Um, Every morning you've spoken to every person that's, you know, in the building and that's 60, 70 people touching base and checking in and making sure that 
they know that they're important, even though they might not be um, in that 23, because it is an easy slide to get into is, and, and that's, that's something we can't afford to do because that's not what we're about and we won't get better if those young um, guys who may be currently on the fringe, but in three or four years will be very much centre of what we're doing, don't feel valued right now. Oh, thank you very much, Dean. And thank you very much, uh, Nathan, for your question. Before we wrap up, um, to Dean, Methvin and Gordon, any other final words that you want to say to, to the fans, to the supporters tonight? I just, I suppose, for, oh, sorry, I wouldn't want to put those two off, the amount they've spoken tonight. <laughs> Let's go. No, go for it, Dean. You, you, you lead the pack. I just want to say thank you. Is um, I know it's been really, it's just been, I suppose, in, in so many fronts. Let's remember rugby is only part of what's going on in all our lives and all the challenges that we've got. Um, I'd say to you, a bit like I say to players, it's, it's tough sometimes to be Dragons. It's not got the easy fixes that other places can have. Um, and it does require a, a passion and a belief about where we're going and what we're doing to, to hold everybody in. And no more so when we haven't been able to catch up with a few mates, have a beer and watch a bit of rugby and get behind it. So I can only say thank you. I can't wait to see you all. Um, and I know the club are working hard on these types of events to, to just keep us talking to you and engage. So a big thank you and I can't wait. And I hope everybody is uh, safe and, and families till, till we can get back together. Absolutely. Yeah, I'd just like to echo Dean's thoughts. Thanks to everyone tonight. Um, and thanks for all the questions and, and giving up your time to speak to us. We're very, very grateful. And, and hopefully at some point in the near future, um, we can see you all at Rodney Parade and uh, cheer on a Dragons victory. Yeah, just for myself really just, uh, Nice to do a Zoom call tonight, really, just to see and feel. Obviously, we have got support, and uh, the important thing is uh, we'll get through this difficult time. And uh, and I can't wait to obviously get everybody down on Rodney Parade, and uh, we'll have a, a good time when we get a, get uh, everybody back in uh, together and shouting and supporting. So thanks to everybody. Absolutely, thank you very much for those great words, and guys, thank you so much. <laughs> We so many questions, obviously, so so little time, but hopefully we covered lots of topics. And of course, a surprise guest as Dean announced Griffiths. So uh, that was uh, really, really lovely and very uh, exclusive for us this evening. But thank you so much for joining us once again tonight. This is uh, one of four nights on Zoom with various players, coaches. Um, enjoyed it, then rave about it and come and join us again next month. It's uh, the 1st of March is going to be the next one. But thank you once again to our special guests tonight, uh, Dean, Methvin and Gordon. Have a great evening, guys. And good luck for Friday. Stay safe, stay well, and uh, we will see you all next month. Thank you very much. Good night. Thank you.